Hello everyone. In this video, I would like to talk about the step six: connect the mathematical model to PID as a controlled object. As we discussed from the previous videos, we basically build up the analog channels and the PID core function block, that is a PID underscore compact. And the next things we will connect this PID compact function block to the controlled object. And in real case, we will connect this PID function block and connect the analog input, analog output to the actual process. For example, maybe a water tank, maybe a temperature process, or maybe a pressure control loop system. But if you are the control specialist or the programmer working in this project, you have to wait for the construction work totally finished. For example, uh, the construction team need to totally finish the tank building or the pressure pipe complete. Also, you have to wait for the technicians finish assembling and wiring about the sensors actuators. So you have to wait for a long time. But uh, if you have the mathematical model of your controlled process, sometimes the research team or the engineering team, they might have the mathematical model. Or we can use the system identification toolbox from MATLAB to identify the process model. Regarding this topic, I used one another video discuss this topic before. I will paste this link under this video. If you already have the mathematical model of your controlled object, how can we use our PLC PID controller to connect this mathematical model? And then you can use this model as your process object and uh, test the PID game integral and the derivative parameters. And once on site, they finish the construction, so you can switch this system to the actual process. Leveraging the process model, this simulated controlled object, we can do the pre commissioning, we can do the commissioning in advance and it can save us a tons, tons of time when we work on site. So in this step six, I will use the six sub videos to show how can we set up the OPC connection between the PLC and the MATLAB Simulink, and how can we build up the control loops inside the MATLAB Simulink, and eventually how can we set up the connection between the PLC and the Simulink and go online test about this uh, PID control loop. I will use one second order time domain or S domain transfer function, transfer it to a Z domain, and import this uh, Z domain second order transfer function to MATLAB Simulink, and use this uh, model as our controlled object. In this video, I will generally introduce the whole structure of this uh, control loop. As shown in the screen, this is the whole control loop. From the PLC side, we will use this uh, PID underscore compact as our PID controller. That is our PID algorithm. And for this PID, it has an input and an output. So the input that come from the MATLAB Simulink feedback. And the output, that is our PID control. So this control signal will send into the MATLAB Simulink. So the communication between the MATLAB and the PLC, we will use uh, OPC UE. Using the OPC UA, it allows a MATLAB Simulink directly communicate with a PLC without any interface software. So in this step six, we will have six episodes, six sub steps. The first step, we will show how can we transfer the S domain or time domain into Z domain discrete equation. And so we will implement this method inside the MATLAB and then we will show how can we set up the OPC UA connection inside the PLC that is a Siemens 1200 controller. And third, I will show how can we set up the loop control inside the MATLAB Simulink. And fourth, I will show how can we set up the OPC UA connection inside the MATLAB. Build up the OPC connection between the MATLAB Simulink and the PLC. And number five, I will show how can we go online and test the online status of this control loop. And last step, I will show how can we do the fine tuning 
using this uh, PID controller, PID underscore compact, and this uh, simulated process object that is uh, running inside the MATLAB Spin Link. All right, that is uh, this video. That is a general introduction of this uh, step six. So in next video, I will show how can we use the MATLAB transfer a S domain to a Z domain about the process transfer function. See you in next video. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you for watching.